This is Twit. I think there was one other development this week that is probably worth noting, which was that DARPA, the uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, I believe that is short for, uh, released... Uh, they're developing a new voting system. Yeah, wasn't uh, that interesting? An open source online open source voting? voting system. Yeah, it well, it's an open source like voting system, uh, and uh, the fact that it's not being done by a for-profit company uh, is, and that it's open source is. Uh, th those are both good things. It's not online. I should say it's a, a electronic voting, but it is. Uh, intended that companies like Diebold, Diebold will adapt uh, adopt this system. I don't know if they will, but it does have a paper trail, which is something that computer scientists Absolutely. and security experts have long said has to be included in any voting system. Uh, DARPA uh, has spent a lot of time and money on this. We uh, we uh, talked about it on Security Now. Actually, according Tuesday. to the story I'm reading, they spent ten million dollars, which by government standards, I guess that's not a lot. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Drop <laughs> that's that's sounds like a lot to me, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Um, and they're, one of the things they're going to do is they're going to bring voting machines with this new system to uh, DEF CON, the hacker conference. Wow. You know, they have that voting oh, yeah. village where they bring voting machines. And, of course, all of the voting machines in current use <laughs> ended up getting hacked last year. Right. Uh, they're going to be uh, publishing source code online, bring prototypes of the system to voting village this summer and next so that hackers and research will be, researchers will not only be able to freely examine the systems, but they'll also be able to conduct pen tests to try to break into it, which and is great. I was a little skeptical about it until I actually started digging into it. And I realized the company that's been contracted to do this research, they're not trying to make a product. They will not bring a product to market that will be sold. They're making the reference for it. Right. And, and that's what I actually really like. They're, they're especially the fact that they're willing to bring it to DEF CON. Mm -hmm. That's what generates best practices. Things like what we discovered last year from the voting machines that we disassembled, where you have hard-coded credentials in firmware, you have swappable SD cards that could actually allow you to run a completely different operating system right. on the hardware. <laughs> now, you know, little things like that would never have passed right. peer review. Right. Well, if you have a company that's willing to bring it to DEF CON, where they know people will break it, yeah. uh, that that inspires a lot of confidence. Yeah, They're going to do two basic voting machine types. Uh, the first will be a ballot marking device that uses a touch screen so that voters can make their selections. That system won't tabulate the votes, but will print out a paper ballot. Right. So the viewers, uh, voters can review them before depositing them into an optical scan machine. Is there any explanation of why DARPA? I mean, uh, what's, you know, they're a defense. I think it's exactly the kind of thing that uh, DARPA should be doing, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's advanced research. The optical scan system will print a receipt with a cryptographic representation of the voter's choice. After the election, the cryptographic values for all ballots will be published online. So you can go as a mm -hmm. voter and verify that your ballot's there and that the vote was correctly tabulated. Open source, verifiable, mm -hmm. and transparent. I think this I, is great. That's what we've, yeah. we've been asking for. The second system is an optical scan system that reads paper ballots. This is what we do in California. We get a paper right. ballot. We mark it by hand, kind of one of those punch cards you've seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that'll bring uh, that system is going to come to DEF CON. Mean no hanging chads. No <laughs> hanging <laughs> chads <laughs> anywhere. Let, let me ask the panel. How many of you voted at a polling place this last election? No. Oh, I did. Oh, you did? Good yeah. for you, Ed. Good for I you. dropped off my absentee ballot at the polling place. Was it in Santa Fe? <laughs> it was in Santa Fe. <laughs> I've been New absentee Mexico. valley, uh, absentee ballot for the last, what, seven I elections? Have two. I really like going in. So what I do yeah. is I, I mark it at home at, take at it my in, leisure. Bring it in. And okay. then I go to the polling yeah. place. I do that. And just on, just in case I'm traveling and, uh, you know, I, for some exactly. reason, I want to yeah. make sure. But I but if I can go to the polling place, I love going there. I do too. I love what I used to consider old people, but now they're my age. <laughs> they are. I know. Around. It's, the cops well, are now they, kids. Yeah, I know. But the people at the polling yeah. place are our peers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, in, in New Mexico, we have early voting for almost a month before the election. So although we can do uh, ballot by mail or we can fill them out and drop them off at the county clerk's office uh, or you can fill them out and drop them off at one of the early voting places. But there's a half a dozen uh voting early voting locations around yeah. town that you can go to so it's it's pretty convenient we just went and voted and then you know went and had breakfast at one of our favorite restaurants around the corner so it uh, became a social it's thing we brought neat. a few friends yeah. with us Palo Alto has a ballot drop off at the libraries they kind of look like big mailboxes so you just put your ballot right there at the library that's secure yeah 
No, that's true. Uh, to answer your question, actually, I'm reading further at uh, Motherboard. The voting system grew out of a larger DARPA program focused on developing generally secure hardware. Hmm. The pro program called System Security Integrated Through Hardware or Firmware, or SITH, was launched uh, in 2017. It's apparently hard to do secure hardware. And so it was aimed at developing secure hardware and design tools to build that hardware so that hardware would be impervious to most of the software attacks prevalent today. And there's, of course, Sith. 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 Sith? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Are the Actually, Sith the ones with the funny faces and the double sided. Uh, yeah. You know, that's not really true. I have a blender, blender, which, as far as I can tell, is, is very it's from secure. The Sith? It's, oh, it's, okay. It's no, yeah, it's very no secure. internet connection. Uh, apparently, in, uh, this is the quote uh, from Sith. It, software has been the way people try to solve the problems because software is adaptable. Uh, there are some hardware security solutions already, but they don't go far enough and require too much power and performance. We want to fix this in hardware. And then no matter what software vulnerabilities you have, attackers couldn't exploit them. The problem is most hardware is gullible. Did you right. know that? Most hard and has no way of distinguishing between acceptable and unacceptable behavior.